to a very large curriculum and instruction agenda. So we're going to begin this evening tonight um, with an action item. So critical instruction item A is travel. So this is for action on the travel agenda. You will see that we have a couple of staff members listed for uh, operations and maintenance. We do have board members listed on the agenda. And then we have teaching staff members who are listed when we receive training for uh, advanced placement courses. So that's travel. Then for discussion and then voting at the RAM, the curriculum instruction other, and I'll go through some of the items that I'll highlight. So, highlights. so under other B1, I'm recommending that for approves curriculum changes for 24 25. Uh, I have shared with the board the spreadsheet of those curriculum changes, that's specifically for English language arts, math, and arts and science. These are just the standard changes. So, curriculum is based on Standards, we use a standards based curriculum guide. Uh, back in the late fall, the Department of Education shared with all New Jersey districts that they are required for September 1st, the coming school year, that they have written standards and changes that they have implemented on September 1st. Uh, that's a little bit challenging for districts, but you're getting more time because you have to rewrite curriculum, you have to teaching staff, and approve. So we accelerated that process. So what you're seeing really is work that had been done by teachers during the winter or early spring. We did trainings throughout January through May, and you're seeing the, the, the final product of standard changes. I also included in the board folder a crosswalk. So a crosswalk is where you can basically compare and contrast from 2016 when those current standards were put into place and implemented versus what they call the 2023 standards. So you can see what the changes were in language arts and math. And then I can go through if you want more detail, I can go through a summary of what those actually look like. But you just know that we are required to have these changes done at the end of the 1st September. Uh, so the work that we can prove is done and ready to go. Under item number two, we're asking the board to approve a participation in team arts. Item number three, anything approved by the way that's renewal, so these are things that we Done previously. So, item number three, tools of mind, that's our pre K curriculum. We are required, if you have a pre K program, that you have to use one of three New Jersey group curriculums, which tools of mind is. It's, it's paid for through the PTA funding. Item number four, teaching strategies goal. You're also required to have an assessment platform for your pre school program. So, this is the program that we, we have been using. Collects fantastic data, easy to use for our teachers to get trained in it, and it's also paid for through the uh, Item number five, uh, Atlas Curriculum Mapping. So, more commonly known as Rubicon. Uh, Rubicon is the online, it's our, it's our, all our curriculum guides where it's hosted online, all the work is done in this particular program. So, teaching staff, whenever they need to see the curriculum, the unit, a standard, uh, sample lesson, that so hosts our curriculum. Uh, taking to item number six of the next few I'll kind of go through the curriculum. These are the rules of the programs that teaches that use for students. Uh, so these ones, for example, is online simulations for math and science. Edutyping is a typing program. Teach K1 students uh, keyboard skills and how to type on the computer or laptop. Uh, so that's edutyping, that's rule. Item number eight, link it. So Link it is a renewal, that's a data warehouse that we use for grades 6 through 12, which has benchmark assessments. So we what we're talking about, some of the assessments we use to monitor kids' interventions, that's one of the platforms, that's the 6 through 12 only, we have to the system for uh, measurement. Item number nine, mystery science, so this is supplementary materials, K5 for science. So number 10 is RAS plus one known as learning agency, this is for grades K5. Special ed students at BAMS. I use this particular program for guided reading materials and lesson plans. Uh, item number 11 is IXL, which is an online program for math, and arts, science, social studies, and this is skill reinforcement. Uh, it's available to teachers and students 24 7. Uh, it is a uh, great tool to use to introduce lessons, to remediate skills. Item number 12, EdPuzzle. EdPuzzle is an online program for secondary grades 6 through 12. Uh, it's a 
online technology that provides video based lessons for content areas. So this is great for students to use for project based learning, as additional research, teachers to use it as introductory lessons. Uh, I'll give you a great example. So I also my now graduated high school daughter, um, when she was taking chemistry, would use Ed Puzzle at home to practice some chemistry concepts that she didn't quite get in school. So she would use Ed Puzzle as a test prep. So fantastic tool that students, they, they know they're very comfortable with it, because it, it, it's video based, it's at their level. So uh, great, great opportunity for kids to, to practice a little bit more than they can practice as well. Uh, iReady, so similar to the other platforms, so iReady is our to five assessment tools. I just talked about this a few minutes ago. So this is a renewal that we use as one of our multiple measures to look at students and their achievement measures. Uh, item 14, New Zella. Uh, this is for grades four through 12. We primarily use it grades four through five. Uh, and this is where you can find online articles and their assessments that are used to support those articles. And this is a, a supplement curriculum. Uh, under item number 14, they're just a, a type of we'll adjust the year 22,254 so be correct, so I'll adjust that. Item 15, studies weekly, so this is for grades 8 to 5, so this is um, social studies material, so instead of purchasing and investing in a full curriculum package of textbooks, assessments, and materials, uh, this is more cost effective to use, and it allows to when we reorder each year, uh, keeps up with the technology, keeps up the licensing, so uh, it's easily adaptable. So this, this is in lieu of a full of a history program to that truth. I know the 16th Regional Professional Development Academy, they're located in uh, Eaton Town, uh, where we can pay the cost, and we can have classroom teachers go for a variety of topics related to elementary and secondary education. I know 17, the Mount County Curriculum. Consortium known as MC3. Uh, this is for our directors of curriculum instruction and for me. It's also open to teachers when they do professional development. It's, it's a cohort of curriculum directors and assistant superintendents where we learn and discuss about initiatives related to curriculum instruction. Item 18, Boomerang, this is a Google add on. Item number 19, the Great Body Shop. This is the curriculum that we use to deliver our uh, health instruction. Item number 20, Imagine Learning. Uh, this is an instructional support. This is for uh, ESL for our multi language learners. So it's a great deal of ages. Rosetta Stone is also a language based program for ESL class. Item 22 and 23, Big Ideas Math. This is the curriculum that we use for mathematics, high school, and middle school. Uh, item number uh, 24, this is the curriculum that we use for our biology courses. Item 25 is the curriculum we use for geometry. Item 26 uh, is the curriculum materials that we use for Latin. 27, CJCED. Uh, so th this is a uh, consortium that involves administrators, teaching staff, students, hosted by Monmouth University. We participated for a, a number of years. Been around probably since 2016, so we've been involved for quite a while. Where uh, our team goes to Monmouth, they get professional development, uh, specifically on uh, topics related to uh, excellence and equity. Uh, they put together a presentation, they share the presentation with other participating members, uh, kind of success with this particular program since we're cool. Item 28 Super Academies Academy, Principals Academy, Social Change Academy. This is professional development for school leaders, also at the University. Item 29, similar Special Services Academy, similar to item number 28, so we're going to have different academies. Item number 30, this is, so it's a black typeface, so this means it's new, it's not a renewal. So, uh, zoology is a new course that we offer at the high school, which is integrated into our environmental science course. Same thing for item 31, where we're uh, converting marine biology and oceanography into an uh, in a biocide course. 
Item 32 is our civics program for eighth grade social studies. That's new. Item 33, I talked about this a little while ago, DIBLES. So DIBLES stands for Dynamic Indicators of Basic Early Literacy Skills. This is an assessment that we use for uh, reading based interventions. Uh, it's an assessment tool. So this is something that we talked about with teachers would be trained uh, throughout the year. We wouldn't implement it right away, but they have access to it. And item number 34, foundations. Um, before we go through the rest of the questions, I just wanted to call attention for those who are on the travel policy and might have done the math and realized, oh my goodness, there's four of us on the travel, um, not travel policy, excuse me, we have the travel uh, agenda. Um, I've been told that we can abstain just from the line, our, our own line on the travel agenda and still vote for it so that it can still pass the night. Right. Are there any questions about the curriculum instruction? I have a question. Item uh, 34, foundations. Is that a one-time thing or is that annual? So it's a one-time fee to purchase the materials. Once we have the materials, we're good to go. And so it's actually that number is much less since we have the materials. Than we do. Uh, then there's a professional development cost, which will be annual. This will be the material cost. A quick, a quick statement before we move on to student services again. Um, we, we model this agenda after my agenda from May, where you see purple is renewal, black is new. Um, there are a lot of programs we did not review this upcoming school year. There were six programs that uh, we invested in previously that we found usage was low, uh, feedback from teachers was not positive, just because it wasn't used. Uh, so there are things that we that you're not seeing that have been cut out. Um, we have see them to have a binder of probably six inches thick of uh, usage reports that we do each year. So the items that are being renewed, we actually have data for each of those that show even for what it is. Um, the number of hours, the number of downloads, the number of lessons. So we have the data that supports why this is going to be on the agenda. So uh, just to share with the board, we, we are being fiscally responsible with what we're presenting to be the, there's a need. Positive usage and positive feedback, and try to be as smart and as responsible as possible. But uh, just to add additionally, so I've had a couple of board members happen to notice. So if you look at the account numbers, we also are using several account numbers to be able to support the budget. So you see Title II, you see Title III. Those are not local accounts, those are all um, account numbers that are funded from the different grants as well. So that has so it's not all coming out of the local budget. So I just wanted to point that out. And then under item 27, I did want to point out that for the Central Jersey Consortium for Excellence and Equity, our students presented um, just a Tuesday, I think it was maybe two weeks ago, on a project that they worked on at the high school. And they were awarded um, and acknowledged as the high school social justice warriors who are among Uh, 
other programs and foundations where we try, we try to do, we do annual refreshers to make people jump in on, on that piece of it. And then if it's not something that we're actively training on uh, to do their, their brand new and uh, their growth and their certification process, the mentor helps them with that, uh, the principal helps them with that, the grade level meetings, our director of instruction. We all know who the new pilots are, what they would need, and so they're some of that data. Kind of goes back to that, that you're concerned about the brand new teacher first year. Yeah, without a doubt, they're overwhelmed. There's no hiding that. They are overwhelmed. And once we get that, so we can try the best we can in terms of having some food with them. Uh, lots of better terms, but So the mentor teacher thing, I know I've heard it, but that also um, is reassuring. When do we not, when, at what point do they stop having a mentor teacher? Do they always have somebody that they're their go-to. So it's a, it's a two-year process because um, teachers, when they come out of college, they come out with a certificate of eligibility that allows them to interview. They get hired, they're given a provisional, which they have a two-year process to go from provisional to a standard certificate. So that year one is heavily driven and outlined and, and you, you prove the mental plan. You can see like, what they're required for the So that year one's intensive and then it's a gradual release for with the mentor. They, they made that a connection, so they always have that opportunity, uh, but the structure of lessons after year two. And we do a new teacher academy, so once a month, we bring new teachers after school, and we have different staff members, administrators present on the body topics, so that's how it also Turkey, this particular uh, program. Item number nine is the student resource 
school is a great system that I can provide them with CPR training for their school, which is something they really want to work on. Item number 10, Teachers Pay Teachers. TPT uh, is a, it's an online program where teachers create lessons and upload them, and other teachers can pay for them and download them and use them. Um, we use it specifically to supplement um, special ed programs, which is why it's on this part of the agenda, not on the instruction. Uh, item number 11, it has to be able to improve. Teach Town. So Teach Town is a curriculum that we use in specific special ed classes that is based on ABH, the body behavior analysis. Uh, I gave a description of the more questions, but basically it's a curriculum for teachers to use with students in teacher programs. Uh, item number 12, so you can see the colors are changing for this. So item number 12, we're asking that we were to prove all the providers for the next school year, so the providers are listed. Just a quick summary is uh, maybe for evaluations, for consulting, uh, for therapies, for testing services. So that starts on page six, continues on page seven, and as you put through, you can see third description here across, and continue on page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven. So again, these are all supported through. IEPs or students by four. Item number 13 is asked the to approve the RISE program. Item number 14 is the second part of the program we're here to approve a staff member to be trained. So two staff members, one is a renewal of the staff member who's already trained, like this one is going to cost us less. The previous one that I read is a new staff member being trained for the first time. So it costs a little bit more. Uh, this allows us to train all staff members on handling with care and security. Train the trainer to turn the uh, citizens from having a set of staff out. We need to take the Item number 15, I think this is a, a renewal panel, it's one of the committees, this is for emotional regulation, everything drive, pay one of the students. Uh, number 16 is a service contract provider, so this is effective school solutions. The rational is on the next page, the cost on the top of the page. So this is an example of where. Spreads has taken the lead to negotiate with the school solutions. You know the program works. You've heard us talk about it quite a bit. So the fact that we know it works and we do not want to eliminate any services or change any services and it's a significant investment is really important. This is fully a touch on this that if we didn't have this program three or four times the cost of sending the students out of district. This is present when I have not trained so we pop into end of the year breakfast with some students in the ESS office. Uh, and they, they were a walking commercial for the program. Uh, to, uh, they had no idea who they were coming in, how much they loved the counselors, they loved the program. Uh, it was a emotional breakfast because we were uh, we two individual sites. They, they said, ESS saved my life. I would not be here tonight if it were not the ESS. So I mean, that, that doesn't really give us the new need to do programs. Continuing on, uh, item number 17 is our partnership with the YMCA for Calvis Learning um, to be filled up for the next meeting. Uh, item number 18 is a video platform for speech therapies and professional development for speech therapists. 19, Learning Ally. Uh, this is a program for the road. Uh, item number 20, the Rethink program, which is um, training and curriculum and data tracking for teaching with special ed students. Item um, number 21, the lies. This is um, for registered behavior technicians. And this is a board question of how many staff members participate, RBTs, and admissions we use. So we have 11 staff members who have been trained in this particular program. If we did not have those staff members trained, we had to hire an outside service to come in. Um, $1,400, we add a couple of zeros to that. So the $1,400 is well, well worth the investment on this. We actually have other staff members who are interested in the upcoming school year to participate. That includes food services. I have a question that I'm not sure if um, there was a board question that I mean, obviously came from the lot of detail. They were asking about the um, out of district placements, if that list is longer, I mean, is it growing? Is this is pretty stable or is it? 
we're going to begin with an action item this evening. So the board, we have a to do a walking item. So we're asking the board to approve the recommendation of the retirement as listed on the walking item. That's number one. That's the only action item for this evening. Under personnel for discussion and approval at the regular action meeting, item A, reservations for retirements, two staff members are listed who were reservations, but back to dates is listed. Item B, this is on the bottom of page one, and continues on page two of 13. Dean of absences for the grade part of this school year, and then the 24 25 school year, the type of leaves and effective dates is listed. On page two, item number C, item number one, new hires, there are two staff members, two recommendations listed, uh, user to cover leaves for the 24 25 school year. Item number two for the staff rehire lists, that's in the uh, folder. Item number three, the staff rank for 24 25 school year, so the board. Item number four, the extracurricular activity approval. Item, item number five, these are recommendations for the 24 25 school year under summer. This is for this one. That continues on top of page three. Item number six in the curriculum instruction. So this is what we're speaking about the summer curriculum developers. So there's a lot of curriculum writing, so some curriculum updates and some revisions deeper than just the, the standards, which we talked about earlier. Uh, so that is on the bottom of page three. It continues on page four, page five, page six, and it's at the top of page seven, 13. Item on page seven, item number seven, curriculum instruction for 24 25 school year. Uh, this is to ESL teachers uh, to work with the Weedos and Weedos song presentation. This is an assessment to be used for language learners. The staff is going to be able to use the work this summer. Item number eight is to go back and finish up the school year for student home instruction with a number of hours and dates is listed on the bottom of page seven. Continues on page eight. Continues on page nine and concludes on top page 10 to 13. Item number nine staff array changes, uh, two staff members as listed. So, uh, one staff member this, this is to change assignments, uh, which would be going in for uh, reservation. And then, item the second person listed, okay, this is a uh, change in terms of the vacancies at the administrative level. Item 10. TV will have information put in for Mr. Translators. Item number 11 would be substitute specifically for nurses for the 24 25 school year. Item 12 is the affirmative action officer and team members for 24 25. The TV will be built in. The random item number 13 uh, is our district anti bullying coordinator, plus the school bullying specialists for that school year. Item 14. Of college student observers for the school year with their assignment as listed. Page 12, item 15, uh, volunteer for athletics for next school year. Item 16, instructional assistants who will substitute teaching certificates. I mentioned this in the presentation. Item D is the HIM report from the previous meeting. Item number two, under other, is our treasurer's for money. Three is substitute administrator. Item four is to be approval of the contract. Item five is to approve a field flag for staff for the next school year. And I have a motion and a second to accept the walk
want to say I'm not prepared to speak about this today because it was uh, last minute, so I'm sure I will have some blubbering, upset thing to say at the next meeting. Um, but, you know, there's no words for Jay. I was here when we hired him, um, and he's, you know, just, just been um, the best. And uh, thank God he brought in an administration that we kind of just kept moving. Um, so I'm grateful for that. But yeah, so I'm sure there will be more talking about Jay, but we love him. So the recommendations 
our strike our strikeouts for certain technical classes. So their their fallback is well, under Title Six A, which is part of educational law, and it's much more specific. So I printed out. I can share with you. I can read through if you like. So Six A has a much more comprehensive list than what's in the policy. So if the board decides that they want a full comprehensive list, I can share that with the board so you can see what the list looks like. If the board wants to have what's currently in our policy remain listed, uh, that's up for discussion. That's up for the board vote. We can really need to decide the direction. Could there be an addendum with a new list that's more comprehensive rather than taking everything out? Yeah, up to the board how you want to make the So, and I agree because I actually sent in the exact same question in terms of why are we removing them because it's for staff to look at these policies, students, the school community, um, parents, guardians, like everybody can look at it. And to me, just referencing the statute, no one's going to do that. So uh, for, for me, I think the clearer we are for people, the better. Like, we're lucky if we actually even go and look at the policy, let alone then go step two, now you've got to go find the statute. So, because I did that, I actually plugged in the statute, and I'm like, oh my God, this is so much work for someone if they're just trying to find the quick answer on the policy. So I agree 100% with that. Uh, just a thought um, on the fly, uh, the perhaps one solution would be to keep the language and refer to 6A. 6A is a very long list. You could say, you know, all of these classes and, uh, and anything else that's listed in 6A, which also might be in a little feature group that 6A is added to. So what, that's what, we, what we could do, could do is we share the board. So I have to have it in front of me. So the bold from Strauss Assembly is an addition for adding words to it. So the bold says, not discriminating on the basis of any protected categories listed in 6A and the strike rules are the protected classes. If you just like remove the strike rules so you can see at the next meeting what it looks like with the bold minus the strike rules, there really are no changes. The strike rules are the biggest change in the policy. So you can either do that or you can say, do the policy that we have not been removed. So I'll provide the work with what that would look like so that we would be a more important decision. Actual first reading of the um, Thank you, Mr. Um, I, I too asked the same question why are we striking all that through? Um, I firmly believe that it has to stay in there. In, in addition to that, I agree with these guys, nobody is going to refer to the statute. We want everything that they need to see in that policy to be readily available. So, my thought would be to take the statute and add it to the policy if there are some extra categories that we can just make that list a little longer, no less get rid of it. So I'd be willing to do that. Um, you know, whatever you guys think. Um, are, are you able to share the statute with us? And yes. We can go from there? Yep, so I can include the, the statute. I'll, I'll show I will embed it in the language. I want you to see it separately. So. Right. To, to avoid confusion, we'll label it as 6A, and you'll see it, it's likely in terms of the uh, list much more comprehensive than what's currently in our policy. Uh, it might add to some confusion, but maybe it'll add some clarity, but I'll let the board be able to have the tool to discuss it. So 6A happens to be really the, the changes through a lot of policies that are listed on the tonight's agenda, all tie back to this particular part in 6A. So if you want to go through some other, it really, the, the strike through changes all tie back to this. So would you like me to do the same thing for the other policies that reference 6A? Um, being on the policy committee, that would be helpful. Um, it's really it's really the same language, just different policies, yes. correct? The yes, strike correct. is all the same, yeah. right? So, and the statute is all the same for all the policies. Okay. So, I mean, if, if you sent us the statute once, we would know it applies to which policy. Uh, the only one that was different that I had asked was the concussions and stuff. I didn't notice there was any difference. There was just, okay, we're, it's a renew, but we're not, nothing's new as far as the information. I didn't know, right. like, yeah, Charles would do that. If there was nothing new, I didn't know they sent it forward again. There was through NJSIA, which is the body that uh, 
governance since the last six years. They made some changes to their guidance. Nothing has changed in terms of how we treat students, right? Nothing has changed. changed. The policy itself, the language has not changed. But any time the uh, body of work that affects policy, if that changes. So, for example, if 6A happened to change, you have to change every policy that has 6A in it. NJSIA changed their protocol, their guidance, which means that the policy reflects that change. And the change that NJSIA made was districts must have this policy. We've already had it, so we're, we're to be compliant in this new board PSAC policy or anything else, to be compliant with bringing back the board's attention because it's required to have it. We just have to be ahead of the board. Okay, that would be great. One of them, and So I can just to push in the right direction. So that, that's for Regulation 2200, which is curriculum content. This is a perfect example of why I brought this one up. It ties back to 6A, where all the strike throughs lead back to this. So the, the answer to that would be the superintendent or designee in terms of looking at curriculum. So that would be, it would be me working with Dr. Rawls and working with our two directors on curriculum and instruction. So the four of us are part of a committee that would to look at critical instruction along with principals and staff members. So we're the ones that go through that process. If the board decides to embed 6A in the process, it actually would be much more effective for us because it was more of a tool to utilize for the voting. So what is that looking at? You're correct, 6, 6A doesn't mean anything if the four of us all of a sudden leave and someone else picks up the policy. So okay. it's a little bit whole of the logic, so that would be helpful. So we currently have this policy, it's already approved. 
of the option that we have had for a number of years is the fourth one down, so we can hear some alternative pieces of what our option is. Involved coordinated efforts of all teaching staff members under the leadership of certified guidance and counseling personnel. So that's the option that we've been working under. That's our continued recommendation. So in this policy, this is actually not one of the changes in the policy, but anytime Strauss makes any changes, there happens to be an option. We can the option piece of it. So we can, in a first or second read, depending on what we want to see, we can remove all the other options. We won't say optional anymore, it'll just be what our recommendation is. And the remaining changes, uh, just a couple of language changes on the second paper. It's 6A. Services with Kingsburg, number 10, 11 will be the share of the 
12 is our recruitment with MJ Pride. 13 is the shared services for Aberdeen Township in regards to their summer recreation program and us providing busing. Uh, whatever they do use, we will build that. And then the district organization chart will be updated and placed in the agenda folder before the next meeting. Routine travel reimbursement needed to be increased for the remainder of the year. The 16 for cell and cell monitoring is fast. That is our um, fire company, and if there was ever an issue, they need to be able to get access. So it goes over a cell service. Same thing for the burglary and alarm. And then 18, 19, 20, and 21. Uh, we will be changing accounts. We did rewrite our R Pesser grant so that we can incorporate these funds. So we'll be using the remainder of those for student Chromebook replacement, staff Chromebook replacement, classroom computers, and audio video protection systems throughout the district. 22 is the security camera and slows have delineated. 23 is the security camera management that we'll be adding uh, replacement of the server so that it can handle all the additional cameras. And then 25 is the fire evacuation drills for the month, and 26 is the bus evacuation drills that are required twice a year. Are there any questions or comments about the finance agenda? Um, just real quick, I just, um, Ms. Casey, can you just explain the broad break? So we went out um, to the state for RAP grants and we were approved for partial replacements throughout the district. Our main goal would be uh, the high school, the middle school, and Cliffwood. Our roofs have no warranties left on them. Um, when we put our roofs on last time, they had a 15 year warranty. They now come up to 30. Uh, so we are looking into seeing our options. We have been working with multiple vendors to figure out what we're going to do. Next steps will be an infrared. Um, but again, in order to get any of the money that you put out replaced by the rod grant, you have to do a final approval and we need to show that that money is in our capital reserve account. I just have um, two things. One is the student Chromebooks. I know you had asked the question just to share the curiosity of how long um, before we replace student Chromebooks. So we started a replacement program. Um, so everybody pretty much it's typically on a four-year rotation. Some teachers are meeting quite before that, so sometimes it's less. Thank you. Um, and then the last thing is the shared service with the faculty. Um, I know I had asked the question, what about Madelon? Because they also have a recreation, um, summer recreation program. I know it was mentioned they hadn't asked for it yet, but I know they are planning. They are. We did reach out. They are looking for alternate bus versions. Is they the new uh, recreation director? Correct. So just don't want to lose sight and then it's too late. We, we did an offer, they know it's here. Um, however, they are looking for different sources, so for now. Can you just read again 
what the language is about critiquing players. I just, I just need to make sure I understand. So I have a little more context. This part of the policy that like there's a header to it. So there's underneath the header there's eight different subtopics. So the header is unsportsmanlike conduct shall include, but not limited to, the following. So to list out what would be considered unsportsmanlike. We're commenting on one of the pieces that says, any school or athletic staff member who is publicly critical of a game official, opponents, coaches, players, and then it gets into the remaining pieces of it. So our language change would be any school or athletic staff member who is publicly critical of a team official, opponents, or all coaches and players. Okay, so my viewpoint on that is uh, that I don't support that. And I don't support that for this reason. Uh, I, I played high school baseball, and it was not uncommon for a coach to say, hey, oh, that's low. That's a low pitch. That's out of the strike zone. That's public critique, but that's part of the game. If I'm a coach, and I have to yell something to a right fielder to move over, or a center fielder to move over, I'm publicly critiquing them. So I, I, I get that nobody wants children to be abused or officials and things like that, but critiquing could be something as simple as I pull a kid over to me who gets thrown out trying to go from first to third base and I'm talking to him, that parent could say, you're publicly critiquing my kid about what they did. That's coaching. That's, that's what coaches do. They give constructive criticism so you get better. Um, so that's a concern for me when I hear that because I don't know if that policy then opens us up to parents coming out and saying, well, your policy says that you can't publicly take my kid. I don't know how as a coach you would never do, like a basketball coach stands up and just basically shouts out things all game long. Watch this, what, I mean, it's constantly happening. So um, I think we need to distinguish between what would be abuse versus what is constructive criticism. That's all. That's under, I, I'm just, I just pulled over to look at it. That's, that's under um, those things that, that uh, Mr. Newman said, you know, what constitutes it. And it doesn't say critique, it says publicly critical. So I guess that could, that could require further definition because, I mean, coaches get heated and, you know, I think that's part of being a coach. So, um, and then in terms of, it does say harassing verbal or physical conduct, as, and it includes um, the protected categories. So, I mean, I, I, I think that's a valid point. I think if you look at um, what what is considered critical versus critique? Because in my mind, what you're giving as examples are not what I would be practicing, because I think that is a coach's job. Um, for me, it's more the, if it gets abusive, because I know even this year we had issues with opposing teams, um, and it can get abusive. Um, and so to me, it was more that, not the typical coaching being critical. I think that it's okay. normal. Yeah, so agreed. So maybe it's a language thing. And, and just saying maybe it's getting um, our new um, supervisor of athletics mm -hmm. their opinion in terms of how that should look, but agreed, yes. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
So noted. Ms. Warnicke? Yes, abstaining from line six on travel. So noted. Mrs. Foley? Yes. Ms. Powell? Uh, yes, but abstaining from line four on travel. So noted. Thank you. Um, do we have any unfinished business? So in my mind, I don't even go to the to, to this 
part of it. My, my thing is that, it, to me, it has to be a directive coming from the superintendent, stays in the locker, and then admin has to make sure, building admin has to make sure that the staff understands, and then the staff has to, and then the kids have to understand, this is the expectation moving forward. Um, just for the very basic of cheating, I mean, it's absolutely hilarious how ridiculous we look that kids are taking pictures of tests and exams and forwarding it. And I mean, listen, they did this when my kids were in school, so, and it's only gotten worse, and I know other board members have talked to you about it. So my nephew, I have two in high school, he's a nephew, and you know, they joke about it because they're like, oh yeah, well, so-and-so had him last year, so we took a picture of the exam. So I'm like, just at the very basic thoughts of, can we not change the exam? Or just change the numbering of the exam? Anything to just throw them off. But, but yes, at least if nothing else, leave it in the locker, or if we don't even get to that point, when they walk into a classroom, there should be a bathroom somewhere to the phone. Um, so, and then just to knock down the social media of, you know, bullying and the abuse between the kids during the day. It's just, it's not necessary. And we're going to hear it from the parents. I already know they're going to hear it. Why, I'm like, I need to get to my child. Look, don't care. Back at the end of the day, remember to call the office. If the office called me, I knew I was in trouble. Uh, it, it, it's ridiculous. If you need your child during the day, to call the office if there's an emergency. So I just feel like we always say we're going to do it, and I'm glad that it's taking, uh, you know, other areas are seeing it too, and that maybe we can push it out somewhere moving forward in September. So it was the Surgeon General, but this is the second time. The first time was that report study that said basically there is a link between social media use and mental health of kids. Today he said he wants warning labels on social media, like. They did surgeon double drip with cigarettes, but that's not gonna, I mean, you know, see how many people are reading this morning. Anyways. But yeah, I, I think the key is I know that kids are gonna resist it if we do this now. I think the enforcement is gonna have to happen now, especially with the cheating. I think the key is you don't know any different. You start them when they're at an age before they have those phones really, like widespread access to them and they just never have an experience of having it in school. So, I totally agree with what everyone is saying, but I'm going to add the layer that it's, it's parents. It's the kids are not, the kids are not the issue. They are grown and they're coming through K all the way through middle school without the phone. So it's when they're given the phone and then also the restrictions when you're given that is where we are seeing is the missing piece. So we have many parents that say that they will not call the office and they expect their child to answer their phone. Now, now. but now, yes. but I'm saying that's happening now, but yeah. when they know that, starting from oh, yeah. the time, no, then that's the expectation, right? There's nothing new that all of a sudden they have to follow this new rule. This is just how it's going to be. And maybe there's an opportunity with some of the I don't know if this came from the changes in leadership, but um, the, the experience for, from at the middle school now is that, you know, good luck getting hold of your kid through their phone at the middle school because they're terrified to have it go off. And so, yeah, yeah I, I have gotten more calls from the office at the middle school this year where I thought, I'm bracing myself for the adult that's calling and then it's like, huh. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'm really glad that you used the office number because like, that sounds like a good thing. Um, so I, I think it is changing so that, that may be an opportunity to, that, that as that cohort transitions to the high school, it, it be, for better or worse, the district is training the parents to not expect that. Uh, I don't know, it's just a potential. No, we noticed the decrease in the cohort. And so it's just moving forward with the Ed Foundation. Um, how, did, how would that work? Would leadership reach out to? Amanda, or um, just to see where she's at, or how that's all working. We can we can reach out as um, um, we can reach out. Okay, because I don't even know if they have presidents in place yet. I know they transition. So yeah, okay. yeah, there's a really good.
good education piece that she talked about yeah. um, that I think would help parents realize that it's just to, you know, their kids benefit. Half of them are also on it. Well, I, I was at the post office recently and I watched a, he must have been three or four years old, in line with his mom, never took her eyes off the phone and kept saying, watch this, mom, watch this, and I just broke my heart. So there is an education that needs to come in. Be it resolved that a closed session be convened for the purpose of discussing privacy, personnel, and legal matters. The subject matter of these discussions will be disclosed to the public when the reason for confidentiality subsides. Although the board cannot guarantee it, the length of the executive session is estimated to be an hour, uh, after which the public meeting of the board shall reconvene and proceed with business. Action will not take place. And motion and second to go to exec. I'll motion, I'll second. 